I think the real challenge and I really think the real difference in a good contractor on the ag market is making this post look really good. Yeah. Cause so we're going to bury this. Yep. And then we're going to pick the straightest part of this post to be the, the face of our fence. He gave me a great analogy. Fence posts are like family. If you look at each one of them separately, they all look like trash. But if you put them all together, they look pretty good. <laughs> All right. Yes. Here's what we have. What do we have? We've got coal post off of jobs. Absolutely not tapered. <laughs> These are so we're working with some pretty quality material. Quality. So this is the worst of the worst, actually. This is this, so, this is all this, the trash. Is what, this ought to prove the point that you can get a straight line yeah. backside. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna stand behind that post. Which side the wire is going on? Is the wire going on? This side. This side this side that side so because all these posts are so tapered we're only going to be able to line up off of one side and that's going to be this side so you're going to go down there and you're going to shotgun sight this post in i'm going to hold it plumb and you're going to tell me which way and then we're going to drive the evo up here left and obviously depending on where you look on that post is going to change what it looks like we're just going to try and get it as close as we can Left. Okay. Which way? Left. Face of the post, left. Forward and backward, I don't know. If Backwards? Left. This way? Yeah. Okay. Whoa, so, too far. So you can see, just tell me an inch, look at the base of the post and you'll be able to kind of see. Plum? You're pretty good right there. Give it a, give it a quarter of an inch. Forward? Yeah. And that's going to change because this post, obviously, if we look up here, it's going to be totally different. Because this post is, show, post them how, is show them how trashy this trash. post is. Like up here, see that big old, it's, they're very inconsistent. These are not nice, neat. This is why pipe is nice. An engineered product. Okay. Step back. <laughs> we are working with some real wise guys on this film crew. <laughs> so go back there, Nora and show them what it should look like when they look down the post and it's all plumb. So what we're doing is trying to find the face of that post and matching it up with the face. Stick it. Stick it. So the nice thing about the Evo is one of the reasons I like them is, is that we can, when we're driving the post, we can actually see past the post where some of the drivers have blocks where you can't see, so you can't see your line and tell whether or not it's lined. The Evos, we're gonna be able to see on all, all the way around the post to know the entire time while we're driving it whether or not it's in line so that'll make a big difference and ryan sloop here is a master operator so this is going to go very well is it <laughs> thanks for jinxing me we're bound to hit rock now Okay, so he just drove that post. Man, the lighting's just awful. But you can just barely see how it kind of lines up on that side. This side means nothing to us because the posts are way too tapered for us to be able to tell whether or not uh, it's lined up, and it isn't. So as I line this side up right here, we're missing that end post. We're that way of the end post by probably two or three feet from back up here. But that doesn't matter. Since this is a wire fence, we're just gonna be looking for lining up the wire side of that, or the face side of the post all the way down. And all these posts are gonna be really different sizes. So now you can stand your post up, plumb it up, and line it up with those two. So I'm just sighting off of those two. You're just then. sighting off of those two, and we can only use one side because all these posts are so nasty. But that's the, I think that's what would be a benefit to having a nasty post is training it this. Is. Once you train yep. with a nasty post, a good post is going to be easy like pipe. Yeah, it'll be a piece of cake. So, uh, like, look at this one. Yeah, these so are. I think the real challenge and I think the real difference in a good contractor on the ag market is making this post look 
really good. Yeah. Cause... So we're going to bury this. Yep. And then we're going to pick the straightest part of this post to be the, the face of our fence. So from right here down, oh, it's pretty good. It's a pretty nice post. So we'll use that post as the face. So get your level out and get your. Well, I don't even know that the level is applicable to this post. It is. So I'm pretty so, well dead on it right there. Okay, now does it line up on the face? Yep, check it. So we'll be able to see this. And you can just. I'm going to take a, take a can of paint and paint the top of that far post so we can see it better. There you go. All right, so hopefully you can just, it's really tough, but hopefully you can see as we just barely pull in the line right here, everything just kind of disappears. And that's what we're going for. He's probably just a little proud of the line right now, but as he drives it, and that's what makes the Protex so nice is that I can see the whole line. So you have one way you can drive and one way you can't. So being able to see, I can back sight both, both sides you of can the post. Back sight both sides of the post, especially when you're using pipe here, because I and can the, see. The absolute best part about this is I can do this without you. Yeah, exactly. And if I do I'll need a second the person, the second person can do something productive yep. and not be standing there doing this left, so right stuff. So now that you got it all lined up, go ahead and drive it. And then when you get it down to depth, we'll just want to make sure that it's uh, still plumb and in line. That is a nasty looking post. It's pretty gnarly, isn't it? And I'm using this chain as my depth gauge. That's so a good I'm, idea, too. As I'm walking down this hill, I need to allow more height to get me down this hill. So yep. I watch this chain, and I kind of use this clam as a gauge. This is my, my wire strainer. When I'm moving up a hill, I drive it until this is collapsed. And that just gives me just about an inch and a half to two inches, but sometimes that can kind of help soften the blow. And I yeah. use that as a gauge for how, Great how deep idea. I need to go. Yeah, really good idea. And I can still see both sides of the post. Yep. And you don't have to carry a stick. I don't have to carry a stick. Is it dead on in line? Yeah. So now we can go back this way. And as you're learning to do this, it's really hard to see. I wish the lighting was better. You see how we can, you're that way, just a smidge? Just a tick. I don't even know. So it's hard to see, but he's that way just enough that if he doesn't correct it, what we'll end up doing is we'll end up building a curved line and it'll go that way. And by the time we get down to our rabbit post, we'll be off by two feet. So I think uh, something that we do on our machine is we mark the cylinder when we need to make a small adjustment. We'll take a Sharpie and just put a little mark on the cylinder, pull it in until that mark disappears or touches the mark. That'll give me about a sixteenth of an inch yeah. of travel. We so just I, do I it by it. eyesight, so I just pull it back. So it's, it's easier to it. train. Yep. It's easier to train a guy to put a mark on it, then he knows that that's just a little bit. And when you're early on, the time to the best time to check often is early on in your line when you first establish the line. That's where you get off the most. It's easier to see a line once you establish a whole bunch of posts and a whole bunch of reference points. But early on in the line is where you can get the most deviation and the most correction necessary. So, so I had a guy that used to work for me, work with me. Um, he gave me a great analogy. Fence posts are like family. If you look at each one of them separately, they all look like trash. But if you put them all together, they look pretty good. <laughs> and don't judge them at the first five. You gotta wait till you get a couple dozen in. So the other thing I'll make a mention of too is, is once you get the bottom established, the level this way doesn't matter so much. The level in line that way, it's forward and backward that you'll have to plumb it up with. Um, because all you're going to be concerned with is making sure the top of that post is in line with the rest of them and that you're hitting your rabbit post back down behind us. That's going to be the biggest factor. And especially when you're dealing with posts this nasty, you can find any spot on that post that's probably plumb when you put a two foot level on it and then you move it a little bit and it's, uh, it's no longer plumb. So 
you're, what your eyes going to be looking for isn't so much as whether or not the post is plumb. Your eyes going to see a lot more whether or not that post, post is in line. So we'll see. Now that he's got a line established. And with these, you can push the post back a little bit. You can pull it to you. You can just make those pretty small adjustments. By lightly, if I pull on it just a little bit and tap it in normal ground, just a little bit of small vibration will move that post and leave it and not lose any depth by driving. Yep. So just a little bit of vibration will sometimes move that post just enough to get us that little bit of movement we Sometimes need. we'll have to push them over and just use the digging bar to kind of re them up. All pretty. right, let's check these. All right, let's... Oh, that's going to be perfect. I bet we're almost dead on. Again, it's going to be... You can shut it off, right, and we'll talk a little bit. Oh yeah, this is, you can't see it because you can't see that end post, but it's dead on. If I move this in line with my eye, I can just barely see it. I mean, it's dead on. So I'm using that chain to walk my flow down. Now, if, you can't really see it in the video, but we're, ch we're changing terrain here as we go down. What's up with that milk carton walking through your pasture? There's only one. There's only one, Charles. There's one, only Charles one, Charles. Sloop. Let's talk about why you would want to use this method versus a string. So you have all this vegetation on the ground that hangs up strings and hangs up wires, but we've also got a hill. And so we've got, we can only see probably the top three feet of that post down there. We've got a little bit of a rolling hill that we're gonna come off of and when you're when you've got a string or a wire line, you've got to snap it. And a lot of times if you can't pull it up high enough, it can actually just get snapped right back down to the ground offline. And so whether or not you're fighting with wind or you're fighting with vegetation and trees and stuff like that, the line of sight gives you a lot more flexibility for the type of terrain and the type of obstacles yeah. you may. And something that we've learned from y'all is we have a PVC pipe, heavy mm -hmm. wall PVC pipe. Um, and we'll take a level to it. If we're sighting over a hill where we can't see over it, then we'll set that down on the ground, plumb it, and then we'll rifle it in and have somebody at the yep. other end hold that pipe up. Yep. Just like a grade stick, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So and that was another thing I was gonna mention here, grab that. If you're trying to practice doing this at home, one of the things that you could do before you go to the field and actually uh, put it into practice when you're, you've got maybe concrete is take a bunch of a surveyor's laths and you know they're kind of wide, they're about two inches wide. You can actually go out and line all those up and make a nice line. You can practice the same thing, getting them all to the right height. So if this is something you're trying to do, go out and practice some of the stuff we talked about on the board and just drive them in and try and get them plumb and side them all in and see how straight a line you can build. Maybe just do 100 feet of them or something like that. But a surveyor's lath, a bundle of those are super cheap and it would give you the ability to practice this. You just need to find some place where you can actually get them in the ground. And they don't have to go in that deep even. You just need them so that the hold up so that you can get them plumb and then side them in with the next one and just keep on going. Um, so that's, you know, that, that would be my suggestion if you're trying to learn this is just find something cheap that you can go out and line up repetitively without a lot of money. And that'll help you get your height too because once you get a whole bunch of them set, you'll be able to see kind of what the ground's doing. You can stand back after you get 20 posts set and say, okay, I can kind of see what the ground's doing and I need to adjust it and then use your eyeball and that sight mark we talked about uh, to bring it up and down. Um, if it looks good when you stand back from an angle like this, if it looks good doing that, then it'll look good when it's all finished. If you stand back from your fence after you get it all graded out and something looks awry there before you put all the rails and everything on, then it'll look funny when it's all done. So Something uh, else that we do that we learned over in Europe is we, this is just for the ag market, but we dial in, we measure everything from the top of the post down instead of from the ground up. Because as we set our flow of the post, if we measure everything from the top of the post down and when we put our net on or our wire on, if we need to make an adjustment up or down, then we can come back and tap this down. It's harder to get them back up, but you can tap them down to kind of make it roll and then your net and your post are consistent. Nobody's ever gonna look at the ground. They're always gonna yeah. look at the tops. 
Yeah, and you can do that in chain link. It's a little harder, but we've done it with continuous fence or something. We've come back after time and knock some posts down. Typically, we set all the heights so everything flows well in advance of ever putting top rail or anything on it. But in an ag fence application, you could come and knock this post down. Um, we did it on some snow fence once, really tall snow fence. We came and knocked them all down and just kind of tidied them up uh, later on. So in concrete applications, what we always do, uh, because we've got our grade mark down here, let's say our grade mark's right down here at the bottom of the post, we know that as long as we can see that grade mark right here, then we should be able to get that chain link to work or the wire or whatever you're using. Um, if we know that if that mark goes below the soil level, then we're going to have to trench something in, or if it's above the soil level, we know that that's where we may have a, we may have a little bit of a gap underneath the fence. Um, so we can see over the top of this, and already I can see, uh, if I look over the top of this, that second one looks high because if I look from this one to the third one, you can see how we can't see the third one. It's uh, because the middle one's too high. So probably that next one down would need to be knocked down just a little bit, just gauging off of that. Yep. Uh, but you can play with that. And that's one of the harder things to teach people how to do. It's pretty easy to teach people how to put things in line this way. It's a lot harder to teach them to do that with their eyesight. But if you can do that, you won't get those herky-jerky lines that strings will leave you. All right, so quick tips. Practice with some survey last to get your height and get your flow. Uh, use flagging tape or if it's a possibility, you can always paint the tops. I've seen people paint just a teeny little bit of top of the post, kind of like we did uh, back behind here with the white paint. Give yourself something to see very easily, both sides. Um, use both sides of the posts if you have a good, round, perfect product. But if you don't have a perfect product, only use one side of the post and double check yourself often. When you're lining posts up after you've set the bottom, let's say the bottom's in the ground, once it's set in the ground, that's it. You can't do any more. All you can do from that point in time is level it up side to side uh, in line and then um, I don't know what you call that plumb. laterally. Yeah, you just basically plumb, plumb it up, post. plumb it up, and then make sure that it's in line uh, and shooting towards your rabbit post or in line with all the rest of the posts. If it's a fraction of a bubble out, especially when you're using a product that's not perfect like these posts, it isn't going to matter. You're never going to see that. Your eyes going to see the uh, whether or not it's in line way more than it's going to see whether or not it's out of plumb. So um, focus on those things. Practice your craft, and until next time, you have a good dang day. Ha, ha, ha.